Hi, this is Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group with today's investor buyer tip. With me today is Brian Thompson with NRL Mortgage. All right. Brian, how are you today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing awesome. So today's topic, we're going to talk about investor loans and we're going to talk about different options that are out there, to do's and not to do's, and just kind of give you a general overview as to what you should be doing as an investor to get the best financing terms possible. So, Brian, let's start with um, different options available. Say I want to buy a one to four unit property. What are my options? Yeah, great question. There's a lot of actual programs out there for investors that they don't know of. The typical investor loan is going to be a minimum 20% down on a one to four unit property. Um, and it's it's going to be, they're going to have to have a 620 or better credit score, better credit score, excuse me. But it, it is does vary case by case scenario in regards to investment properties because they're a bigger risk, which is why they want a bigger down payment. Now, if an investor wants to come in and find a property one to four units that they want to rehab um, or go ahead and make some remodel to, they can do that. They can purchase it with as little as 3.5% down as long as one of those units is considered owner occupied, where they're renting the other two to three units out um, and doing the one unit as an owner occupied, they'd have to live there for X amount of months, whatever it may be. Could that be like a, anything from like a duplex up to like four units? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. And beyond four units is considered to be like commercial financing. That's correct? pretty much right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It gets a little dicey after that four. And that, that zero down program, that's an FHA program? Or? It is an FHA program. Um, they would they can go zero down if they qualify for that. And they can actually use those, um, uh, those rented spots. They can use those leases or a percentage of that rent to qualify. Wow. So a, a typical scenario someone could, if they're going to owner occupied as an investor, get money for rehabbing the property, perhaps zero down, and they could even you know, maybe ask the seller to pay their closing costs? That's right. So they could get into this thing literally with a small earnest money or even maybe get their earnest money back at closing. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Uh, and like, So say I wanted to buy a non-owner occupied, non-owner occupied, I'd be really looking at 20% down or more. You'd be looking at a minimum of 20% down or Are more. Are there any like credit restrictions, like credit score restrictions or? There is, you gotta be at least a 620. Okay. It falls under Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guidelines. Um, but it's it's really hit or miss. It, okay. it, a lot of it depends on assets. You're gonna have to have a little more assets in the bank. Um, if you're looking at a, a non-owner occupied because they want some reserves in there, again, it's a bigger risk when you're not living in it, you know, and, and collecting rent, if somebody doesn't pay their rent, whatever it may be. But yes, 20% down, minimum 620. Okay, so we've got some people, they, they know they have some options. What are some things they should do up front to best position themselves to making this purchase? Yeah, great question. I would say get your leases in place, first of all, um, and then identifying a property. Um, and also assets need to be, a lot of people don't know this, assets need to be documented or sourced, it's called, for 60 days before the transaction. So, so if that buyer, if you're interested in buying investment properties, if you can get all those assets in one spot, in one bank account, if you have them spread out through three accounts, we're going to have to source all three of those accounts. If you can get it into one account for 60 days, we don't have to source all those deposits where the money's coming from that's that's it's just a lot easier for the borrower so um, if you know you're you're anticipating making a purchase you know do some housekeeping right now get everything consolidated and it's going to create a lot less headache down the road and i, I can tell you firsthand i went through this as a and it was not even an investment property. It was my primary residence. Sure, sure. And I was using money from different uh, different sources, and I had to source all of those funds. It was an absolute nightmare. I wish I would have. I wish I would have known this. Yeah, it, you know? it, it's it's a pain. Yeah. I mean, it's not a deal breaker, but it is a pain. Um, and so, so you want to do that. You want right. to try. If you own others, uh, other investment properties, get your leases in place. When you find a property, find out if those other units or that unit is being leased or rented, um, how long it's been rented for, and if there's continuance on the rent. Um, yeah, those are important things to know ahead of time. And then things like, you know, get your, getting your credit score up if it's lower, like trying to you know get as high as possible because the higher your credit score, the better your rate in terms are going to be, right? No question. Specifically on investment loans. Okay. Yeah, and specifically on investment loans. See, that's one of the first things you want to do is get that application in. See where you stand, if there's anything you need to do, or what can you do. Even if you stand at a six, 750 or 760, 
listen, you want to try and try and get as high as you possibly can. Yeah, and really, that's the first step in the process: meeting with you, getting a, you know, getting that 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 financial health certificate, right? Or this uh, this this financial tune-up, or, or like like it's almost getting a physical, right? You, you want to make sure you know where you're at. And then how can I improve it? You know, if I have high blood pressure, what can I do? You know, stop eating so much salt, right? Yeah. Cut out the sodium, you know, cut out the processed foods. You know, maybe if you've got credit cards that are maxed out or getting close, pay those off, right? Or, you know, just, right. but it, it, and I think the biggest thing is knowing that every situation is unique and it's definitely worth that hour of consultation that doesn't cost you anything That's to exactly get ready, right. which could Absolutely. literally save you tens of thousands of dollars over the life of the loan. Right. So anyway, well, what what would you say you should not do? Um, I, I would think, you know, in regards to any loan, but specifically on investment loans, if you're going to change your job, you need to consult your lender. Um, going from a salary or a W two position to self employed is a huge no no. Mm. Uh, even going from a sa- uh, self employed borrower to a W two can be a problematic. You really need to consult your lender before you do any of that. It's funny because I me- I remember meeting with a guy a few years back and. He was all excited about owning an investment property. I was excited to meet with him. And unfortunately, we sat down for coffee and he's like, yeah, I just quit my job. And, yeah. you know, and I'm like, well, have you talked to a lender? He's like, not yet. I'm like, well, I think you're going to get bad news on that one. I, I don't know that you're going to be buying any investment properties with financing for a while. And, and it was true. He, he basically had just killed any chance that he yep. was going to have to buy. Yeah, it's a big deal. Any job change whatsoever, you got to consult your lender right before you do anything. Um, right. Because, it, I mean, it may be okay as well. It's not a deal breaker, but it can be a deal breaker. Right. So you right. need to figure that out. I think number two would be um, new debt or credit, you know, buying a new vehicle, getting new credit cards and spending on them, so on and so forth. That's another one you need to consult your lender. And again, it's not a deal breaker, but it can be. Um, if you have room in your debt to income ratio and some other items, you want to make sure that that's okay before you go ahead and all, I mean, listen, if you put a purchase agreement on a place and all of a sudden go out and buy a car and it kills the deal, that's a, you're going to lose your earnest money. Um, you're going to kind of dirty up your name. You're probably not going to be, there's a lot of negative impacts right. on that. So. Well, and you know, the, the thing we, we kind of, I was half joking. I asked this question before, uh, we did this, this, uh, video, uh, what about, you know, a divorce? Like, will that kill you? Right. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but a divorce, uh, it can hurt and it can help. Um, a lot of times when you get divorced, debt can be separated. And in a divorce decree, that maybe some of the debt goes to the spouse or the other um, the other p- former partner, and that can help the borrower, the release of debt, it's called. So not to give marital advice, but you're saying if you're getting divorced, make sure all the debt goes to the partner? Certainly not giving uh. marital advice. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But, uh, Just kidding. <laughs> No, it's one of those things where um, you know it can also hurt you if, right. if you're if that debt's released and it's still on your credit and your your partner's not making payments, it's hurting your score. So it's twofold. Or if you don't have a credit history, right? If you if you say your partner you are in a divorce situation and and they have all the credit history, suddenly you don't have credit or you have no history, that could hurt you too, right? For you, sure. If they take the debt with them. So. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a, getting divorced is is also a scenario where um, sometimes you just can't prevent it. And I, I mean, suppose the inverse would be true too, right? Getting married might help or hurt you as well. That's exactly right. It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, and, and we don't, you know, again, this isn't a video on um, marital advice, by the way. <laughs> not yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not yet. Not yet. We'll get there. We'll get there in a, a follow-up video. But but no, that's really good to know. Like, so I th- I think the key takeaway is every situation's unique, and you owe it to yourself to get in front of it and say, hey, you know, where am I at? And to get, you know, where do I want to go? And what's the what's the roadmap to get there? That's right. And you can help people with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Before they go even looking at properties, they need to, they need to paint a picture of their financials and basically the things we've just talked about up front so we know what we're dealing with and they know what they're qualified for. And I think, you know, when you're building out your team, get a get a real estate agent who's who's worked with investment properties. You I have mean, to. you know, Absolutely. if you're you know, I don't when I go buy a car, I don't work with a shoe salesman, right? And and you know, maybe that's an extreme case, but you know, if I want a certain type of vehicle, I want to work with someone who knows that vehicle yeah. and a mechanic who knows how to repair that vehicle. And I think you owe it to, himself, to yourself to work with a mortgage broker who has done investment loans and an agent who has experience in that process because both can serve as guides for you through that process. Yeah, so, they're a different bird. Right, right. So anyway, well, I'm Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group. Today we talked about 
the buyer investment loan option, some do's and don'ts. With me is Brian Thompson from NRL Mortgage. That's right. Yeah, All right, got, got it. it. And uh, we hope this tip has been valuable. Brian, how can someone get a hold of you if they'd like to? Yeah, uh, if, if they can email or, I'm sorry, they can text or call at 763-442-1232. Or they can email me at brian, B-R-I-A-N dot Thompson at N rlmortgage.com. All right. And I'm Scott Picard. If you want to get a hold of us at Verde, it's 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888. Call or text. We hope this content has been valuable. And as always, if we can be of further service, please let us know. Thank you.